Welcome back to another instalment of Ben Go Solar. What's that on the wall? It's not a grow what inverter. This is a Power Mister 5.6 kilowatt, 48 volt DC solar all in one inverter. Um, why have we gone for this? Well, long story. Um, grow what's still in pieces and I'm still waiting for parts. Where. <laughs> Whenever we're going to receive those, I do not know. And the Grow Watt, they've said it's the motherboard. I got in touch with Allo Solar. They said the two year shop guarantee has expired because we bought it in the August of 21. I didn't install it till November, but we bought it in August. So that had expired. Then they said, but it is still under manufacturer's guarantee. Brilliant, two thumbs up. So anyway, after a lot of convoluting emails backwards and forwards, I actually got in touch with through Allo Solar, uh, an engineer from GrowWatt, and they're flat out, no, it's two year guarantee. So there's no way we would have bought an 850 euro inverter if it only had two year guarantee on it. Um, I will put a thing on the screen that showed up on the advert when we bought it. Um, now whether, because the GrowWatt inverter was quite new when we bought it, and they was offering a 10 year guarantee, and then they've started having a lot of problems because I've seen since there's a lot of videos on YouTube with the particular grow what inverter that we've got having to be sent back for whatever reason. There's a lot of faults with it. So they've obviously said, oh, cut that 10 year guarantee. That's going to cost us money. Anyway, I'm not going to slate grow what because they're apparently going to send me parts. After a lot of battles and forwards, after them telling me it's out of guarantee, they said, we'll send you a replacement motherboard and I said, how much is it going to cost? And they said, it, it'll be free of charge because it's our responsibility. Get your head around that one. Anyway, whether it's because I've been putting these videos out on YouTube and they're quite popular, but I say, customer service with Grow What is always pretty good. Um, never had a problem with them before. And the inverter was never a problem. And it just, they said it's the motherboard and that's it. So we're waiting for parts. I will send them an email when I finish videoing this just to see where it's bloody get, got to. Can you hear that? <laughs> it's just, uh, it sits here silently. It is so much quieter than the Grow Watt. Obviously, if you put a load on it, um, the fans kick in, because obviously it's generating a lot of heat. You're converting solar power or DC battery power into AC voltage. It generates a lot of heat inside there, so the fans kick off. The fans are in the bottom. They draw heat in from the side here, pull it down and blow it out the bottom. Whereas the Grow Watt, used to suck the air in from the bottom and blow it out through the top. What's the best method? Who knows, but anyway, we'll have a closer look at this and so far so good. Now, the reason we went for this, it's got a two year guarantee, but it was only 380 euros. I have notes on their website, it's just gone up to about $420, which is about 420 euros. It's pretty much, dollar to a euro at the moment thereabouts um so it has gone up a little bit it came fairly quickly uh it's quite heavy it's 11 kilos i think the grow watts pretty much the same um did have a lot of trouble getting it set up with communication to the batteries now we've got the pylon tech us 3000 c's we've got two of those now what i didn't want to do was just whack charging willy-nilly because those batteries are expensive um they was about 1400 euros each so we're looking at you know quite a bit of money's worth of batteries i didn't want to cock those up they've got a 10-year guarantee and pylon tech stand by that apparently um that was all done officially you, you've got your serial numbers and you fill paperwork in and you sent it back to pylon tech grow what no such luck anyway so i didn't want to just whack voltage into those batteries willy-nilly i wanted the communication to work via the BMS cable. Oh, do you think I could get it working? So there's a lot, before I actually got it all rigged up to the house, putting actual loads on it, I wanted to make sure that it was gonna charge the batteries. So there was a lot of backwards and forwards. Now, Power Mister, I don't know how new a company they are. They've got a lot to learn in customer support. <laughs> and I, you don't spend a lot of money on these things, but you like to have a bit of support now i emailed them 
when I first inquired, I got somebody got in touch via WhatsApp. So that you've got two different people and they're both telling you different things. Now, via the email, someone said you need to cut certain cables on the communication cable or certain wires on the communication cable. Then they said, oh, we've made a mistake. You need to cut the other wires. So I said, this is starting to cost me money. It, it didn't because I had a couple of cables lying about. Then the chap that was getting in touch via WhatsApp. Now, obviously, they're all in China and they only sort of message you in office hours, Chinese time. So WhatsApp messages are coming through at like two o'clock in the morning. Power, pow, mister, sort that out. <laughs> anyway, he didn't really know what he was talking about. And um, he said, I'll speak to an engineer. Then the engineer gets in touch. Um, there's not a lot of communication between the people at Pal Mister because the engineer got in touch and he was talking about a totally different inverter uh, to start with. But then we got to the bottom of it. We've done a firmware upgrade update on it. And it is now communicating with the batteries. We had to set some parameters and mess about. It's communicating with the batteries all apart from the SOC, which is the state of charge. That's not reading correct, but it's working on the voltage. So I've got Pylon Tech say these batteries uh, bulk charge is 53.7. Now a lot of people say it's a bit too high. So I've set that to 53.2. Float charge is 52 volts. Now I've got it set to go to grid. To, obviously if you've not got enough sun coming in and your batteries drain right down, you want to be charging them up. It's set to go to grid at 47.2 volts and it goes back to the batteries at 52.3, I believe, something like that. And it seems to be working really well. <laughs> when it first went to grid, it charged those batteries up less than two hours, was it? Less than two hours. It was whacking 60 amps into the batteries, but that's a, you know, each battery recommended amp charging is 37 volts. Of course, you've got two batteries wired in, um, Yeah, it's parallel, it's not series, is it? <laughs> They're wired in parallel, so you double the amps for your batteries. So that was set to 60, and it was like pulling 3.2 kilowatts from the grid, which is fair enough. But the inverter, when it's charging from grid, goes into grid bypass. And when it's doing that, you can use other items on the house. Trouble is, we're on three phase, and, eight, and we've got 12 kilowatts coming into the house but that's split in threes. It doesn't quite, the maths doesn't work out on this because we've got three phases and each phase is 4.4 kilowatts. So at 3.2 kilowatts, this, you can't have anything else in the house. <laughs> if you put the kettle on, it would blow the trip on the house, on that phase. Um, so I've knocked the amps down to about 30 amps and it does charge the batteries, it just takes a lot longer. It's only pulling like one and a half kilowatts from the grid. Uh, and then, so you can use other things. You can have the oven on, you can have the toaster on what, at the same time that it's charging. Um, obviously, when we get some sun, we've not had sun for a bloody long time. I think the first, the second day we had this connected up, I think we did nearly, I'll show you on the app. The app's a bit out there. <laughs> but... Um, Free air, but the second day I think we did nearly eight kilowatts. So we've not done a lot this month. Um, but yeah, it's all up and running. The good thing is with this, it is super quiet. Um, well, let me just have a quick look on the on the app. See what the house is using at the moment. Oh, we'll go over the app shortly. Um, So yeah, the house is using 202 watts and there's 175 coming in. Now, it'll be pulling the, the remainder out of the battery. So, you know, say 30 watts out of the battery. When this, when the solar is covering the load on the house, uh, say your batteries have charged up to 100%, 
or you know, as close to it, solar's power in the load, the batteries go to sleep because the inverter's not drawing anything out of the battery. Well, it doesn't seem to be. Very, if it is, it's very little. But all the lights go off on the batteries. Now with the grow watt, that never happened because the grow watt is constantly pulling 75 watts out of that battery. So overnight, the battery's just, even if you haven't got a load on, you've still got 75 watts every hour, all through the night, and it, that does pull it down. Um, we don't have a lot of loads on overnight. Obviously, if it's cold, the boiler kicks in and out at a certain temperature, and that's about it. But this thing, um, even if the batteries aren't charged and the solar is enough to cover the load on the house, the batteries just go to sleep. <laughs> it just seems like this inverter is a bit more efficient than the grow -Watt. We will sort of, I won't sort of set that in stone because obviously over time we'll probably experience certain things and this that and the other but so far for 380 euros you know little niggly issues to start with it seems to be working quite well um we will be charging up at some point we're down to three lights on the on the batteries now that's obviously a state of charge lights there's six lights and i think each light is about 16.8 percent if it's split up equally you know six lights is 100 percent so just under 20% each light, so this all seems to be working well. Um, I have got the data logger on there, because I did say to when you know, backwards and forwards, I wanted to know if a certain inverter, there was a 10 kilowatt inverter on there, and they said, I said, will it communicate about batteries? He said, no, it hasn't got BMS. I thought, well, I really want to in connect the inverter to the batteries. <clears throat> for I don't want to cock the batteries up, basically. Um, so he said, oh no, you, you'd be better off with this one. So there was a 5.6, they did an 8 kilowatt version as well. But 8 kilowatts is a bit... It's not that we couldn't use 8 kilowatts, but we don't want to get used to using 8 kilowatts. And when it goes to charge off grid, we've only got 4.5 kilowatts on the phase that feeds the inverter. So keep it as it was. I mean, this is 5.6 kilowatts, which is 600 more than the grow watt. Um, and it just seems more efficient. Obviously, as we go, I'll put more videos out um, <laughs> saying about the good and the bad. <laughs> but so far, it's been 95% good, 5% not so good, but that was a lot of communication errors not <laughs> with the customer support. <laughs> so yeah, if Power Mister get their customer support sorted out, and re return emails to you in a, a timely f fashion and in working hours for Europe, not China. <laughs> it wouldn't be so bad if they were sending emails at two o'clock in the morning because that doesn't ping up on my phone, but WhatsApp does. Obviously, I probably could switch that off, but um, yeah. I probably won't go over the app in this video because I can do another video on the app because it's quite a, an in-depth thing. And I'll, if people are interested, I will go over the uh, Wi-Fi dongle as well. That wasn't as straightforward as it should have been. I followed the instructions to the letter. I watched a couple of videos on it. Whatever I tried in the instructions and these videos just did not work. I was a good few hours pissing about. I tried my phone, I tried Tina's iPad. Um, I managed to get it connected in the end and I will probably do a video on that because that's a whole subject on its own. And I'll do a video on the uh, the app as well because that's quite in depth. Uh, anyway, that's gonna be it. Uh, a lot of you will be pleased that we've now got a DC breaker. <laughs> a lot of people used to scream in the comments, "Oh, you know, you need a breaker between your batteries and your inverter." Well, not according to uh, Allo Solar Grow Watt. No, not Grow Watt, but Allo Solar and Pylon Tech. Allo Solar are quite a big company. They do solar installations as well as selling stuff online so they know what they're talking about i said to them do i need a breaker between the batteries and the inverter they said no if you're just using a single stack of batteries straight to the inverter you only need a breaker if you're having multiple banks and they're all joined up said to pylon tech the same they said no that can go straight to the inverter a lot of people were screaming in the comments oh you need a breaker this inverter requires a breaker now 
we've got it here I will show you close up in a minute that's a 160 amp DC breaker that's what it asked for in the instructions um, I don't know if we're ever going to get 160 amps out of the battery so it probably would never trip that <laughs> but we got one it's a way of disconnecting the batteries if I need to so I'm going to leave that for this video um, just an update we've got a new inverter it's a power mister uh, I will put a link to their website in the description below. I'm not saying go out and buy one, but um, for all the Chinese inverters out there, they've all got a two-year guarantee on them. You know, if you're looking in the uh, things on the instruction uh, descriptions and that, they've all got a two-year guarantee. So the way I see it is, why spend a lot of money on something with a two-year guarantee? Oh, it could be a bit hit and miss because quality control might not be up to thing, but they are, I think they are pretty good if something goes wrong, but we will see. So I'll say I'll put a link in the description, I'm not saying go out and buy one, you make your own mind upon that. But it does seem more efficient than the Grow Watt, I will say that. Anyway, that's it for this video, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.